is aged care. So mm. the government has sat around a table with a bunch of people representing industries, unions, workers and presumably patients, I hope at some <laughs> point here, uh, to decide what changes need to happen with aged care. Now, aged care in and of itself is as complicated as uh, disability care and there's many... a many a tranche to discuss. If only we had a minister here uh, who'd been across this sort of area, and thank goodness we do in your good self. The government is not responding to its own report effectively right now. They're just throwing up all the test balloons, which include um, people having to pay more if they're considered to be richer people. Now, they're not saying that... They're saying the home is off the table, but people like Mike Baird, who's now part of the industry, former New South Wales Premier, I agree with the eye roll, um, he's saying things like uh, extra money for food, uh, $20 a day, all of this stuff. Of what you've read, is there one particular thing that concerns you that the people watching us who are on the verge of aged care or it will be in their life for the next 10 years need to know is the devil in the detail? Look, there are several points. One, the government increased the wages for aged care workers... Uh, by 15% and said it uh, let people believe they were going to wear that expense. Well, clearly they're not. 50% of people who are in residential care are pensioners and they simply pay uh, the vast majority of their pension and nothing else. Mm. Um, people who are um, self-funded retirees already pay. And the way it works is there is something known as um, extra service. And people who are running aged care facilities, uh, will usually have a balance. They'll have pensioners who are paying virtually nothing for rent and all those other expenses. And you'll have self-funded retirees who are paying for extra service. They might get little bits and pieces of maybe a glass of wine at dinner, whatever. Mm -mm. But there are fewer people in residential aged care today than there were when I was the minister. It's basically 50-50 now about in-home and no. care, isn't it? No. No? No home no. packages? No, okay. there are m many, many more home packages. Right, OK. Now, when I was the minister, I think we had about 217,000 people in resi care and 3,000 homes. Today, there are 173,000 people in residential care and the number of homes has diminished under 3,000, maybe 2,800. Um, but the problem is this. Because there's been increased expenditure, expenditure on behalf of the homes, you'll hear that they're putting in saying that they're making a loss. If their mix of who they've got as residents is wrong, then of course they're going to make, make a loss. Right. So it's a business case as well. Now, the minister um, chaired this task force. That's so what I'm saying. She's been it's, across it's, it's, it it's their room. And has not bothered to talk to her opposition mm. um, person, uh, which would have made coming to some sort of sensible agreement more, more likely. But... It is this awful feeling in my bones that the government, the socialist government, believes that your superannuation money is theirs. Yes. And they can't wait to get their hands on it. Yes. And so this is just another mechanism designed to take somebody's superannuation who's been unfortunate enough probably to get dementia or to be so ill from a stroke. Um, and their stay is less and less. And if you look at the figures, they're about... Half the people who are in residential care are in respite. Mm. So there are... When, when I was minister, everybody wanted more beds, but I brought in the policy of ha having care delivered at home. Mm. And the reason I did that was, A, people wanted to be there, and secondly, all the bricks and mortar, the rates, the electricity, the water, all of those things are already paid for. Mm. So all the government has to pay for is delivery of the service. So there are a whole lot of questions in there that have to be reconciled, uh, but simply thinking that that superannuation money is there and can be stolen by the government is not a good solution. Yeah, I mean, to me, Joe, it is so complicated, but it is so personal, and yep. it is going to affect all of us because at one point in time we're all going to end up in a version of it. Yeah, um, absolutely. No, we're I, not. I, I think... Oh, no, I've got to make this point. OK, Please. sorry. <laughs> okay. No, we are I'm, not. I'm running up against the end of the show, but yeah. 8% of people are going to need... Um, residential care. Okay. Another 12%, this is over 70, Right. will need some form of service at home and the rest of us are going to have a damn good time till we fall off the perch. <laughs>
Fair point. Fair point. <laughs> I apologise. All right, Joe, I want to get you in on it. I think the, the point about people being cared for in home is the, the real kicker here, and that's where most of this extra that's... money is going. I think it's about a billion bucks, or almost a billion, um, of the proposed funding will go to p- people but in home there are 800,000 people and, who are having some form of care. Uh, yeah, that's that's right. But point point being, I think you want to encourage people to be in their home as much as possible. I think it was mm. great that you did that. I think it was great that Scott Morrison, one of the great things that Scott Morrison did, I think when he was Treasurer, um, providing extra support for that. But, uh, look, uh, the whole purpose of superannuation is for paying for yourself in retirement. The government is not stealing your money by saying that (laughs) if you have got more super and you can afford to pay for your own care, you should do that. That's individual responsibility, Bronwyn. That's a great... Uh, liberal so, principle. So they will make and sure. Then if you only when they'll you make sure the that they're eligible in. for the pension by the time they go in. No, because yes, it's they needs will. based. No. So it's if you not. can't afford it, you get a basic level of no, care. No, but these, and if you these can are, afford it, you can pay for your own care. Joe, and hold these much are people more. who pay their taxes and then save money all their lives. And there are a lot of people who have not done that. And simply are happy to be. Well, there, are on lot, the there are lots of people from but all walks of life. But they're not who, super they're, rich they're, they're people. A lot, there are lots of people who have worked hard and paid taxes all their life, but they still can't afford to, to well, not to have the pension. And, and, and well, also, pensioners have worked hard and paid taxes all their life. Absolutely, there are. What right. what, so, but so, that's, and then there's plenty, what, that's and there's why plenty the of people working was. hard now, up against cost of living, who will face further taxation or further tax increases if the government uh, has to pay for what is. We this all know, government and, always wants to get their hands on the superannuation. And well, superannuation and indeed, or tax. So what's it on going? their superannuation? That's what they want. No, but the all alternative right. to that is that taxpayers have to pay for it. It's either taxpayers pay for it for someone else, or well, the people who it can is afford their it their money, pay it Joe. Themselves. It's foregone wages. It's wages they weren't able to have during their life. Yes, right. and well, next for the purpose of taking care of them in their retirement, we, we, which is I, all they're being asked to do. I'm very good. I'm glad we had good detailed chats tonight. Uh, we will go into the potpourri of everything else next week. I appreciate it. Thank you, Bronwyn. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Thank we'll you. talk to you again very, very soon.